Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. We are continuing to learn about reactive forms and in today's episode we will learn about the built-in validators for validation. Right? So in reactive forms the beauty is that there are a lot of built-in validators that we can use. Also we can create our own custom ones. We'll learn how to create the custom ones a little later. First, let's learn the built-in validations in this episode. This is part 64 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. I have planned around 100 tutorials for you in this particular series with detailed explanation and live code samples. The playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out. The notes and the code is also in the GitHub link. So make sure that you check that out also and let me know if you have any doubts. Following are the topics that I've covered from ground zero from um, right from the very basics of Angular to the most advanced. So make sure that you go through these so that you learn and master Angular. I'm always reachable out here. Please do drop your comments and queries in the feed in the comment section. I'm here to help you. All right. So make sure that you check out all of these topics I've covered so far 63. This is the 64th episode. Um, today we are learning about the built in form validations. Quick note on reactive forms. Um, there are two types of forms available in Angular, reactive and template driven forms. In reactive forms, the most important thing is that we need to import reactive forms module without which uh, reactive forms won't work. And we will mostly work with form group, form builder and form controls, right? Most of the logic that we write, the designing of the form is done in the component class. The last few episodes I have dedicated exclusively on reactive forms. So make sure you check it out so that you have continuity in learning and you master reactive forms with me. Like I say, I keep telling in every episode, the important things to remember about reactive forms is form control, form group, form builder. Okay. That's what we'll be using most of the times. All right. So for the built in um, reactive form modules uh, for validation. That's what we are going to learn in today's episode, right? So there are multiple ways that we can use um, for the validations, right? The first is we can use the validators along with our form group, right? That's number one. We can use multiple validations also using validators.compose, right? That also we can use and we can get the form state whether it is valid or not. And finally, we can disable the form as well, right? So these are some of the ways that you naturally use um, the built in form validations. So let's go ahead and I will show you all the techniques. Okay. All these four techniques hands on. Let's get started. Alrighty. So we said this is our form, right? This is our form form builder dot group. This is what we are using. This is where we are having our form controls. We have a three form controls here. Right, for loan name, loan type, and loan description. We have three form controls. Now let's add the validation here. So here I'm going to say, so I'm going to a comment of this also here. We don't need that. Okay, um, we don't need this object as well. We learned this while creating the setting the form value. So make sure you check out that episode separately. Alrighty, so I have a beautiful um, form group here, which has three form controls. And I'm saying that for these form, form controls, the first parameter is the form value, the value of the form control. I'm putting single quotes. That means empty quotes. That means it's an empty. That is nothing. It's blank. Right? Now I'm saying that the initial value of all these three form controls is empty. Right? Then in the next the next one, if you see here is the validators, right? The second param for form control is the validators, right? So start typing validators and you would get that here and say dot. Now here you can set these inbuilt uh, validations like required, right? And you can also set it as an array and pass multiple. The best way is to write like this and close it like this, right? So I'm saying this validators dot min length 
right I'm saying minimum length is 10 right so see so validators gets uh, you don't need this one here and validators get added here in the imports and finally in the validation we are writing validators dot required that means this is required field and then we are also saying validators dot min length right for this particular form control now similarly we can add for all or any it's optional if you want you can add it right see here validators dot required dot min length you can add any number of um, validations and that's the beauty of it that it helps us to control the form right from here see what we started with a simple one is slowly starting to take the shape into a complex form right and that's what our job is so that we learn how to implement complex form structures in our application now we have a form control we added multiple form validators right this is how you can add for individual form control now if you want to see this in working let's go to our application now see our I added this line here which is disabled if the form is not valid right so see here loan types the form name dot valid if it is not there is a not condition here I'm saying if it is not valid disable it why is it not valid because we have now added our validations that these are required fields and there is a minimum length this is also required right and what else is missing let's see here go to your form control it says required field and then minimum length and maximum length right so let's see why this is not enabled this should have been let's see here loan type now it's enabled see here but if you don't give any value that will be disabled right let me show you that let's cut it here and it becomes disabled since we said it is required but you did not um, we did not provide a value here so it becomes now it becomes enabled because there is automatic state um, detection from angular which tells whether it is valid or not right so angular maintains that form information state information so we saw how to add one right validation we saw how to add multiple validations also there's a technique called validations dot compose right what it does is you can uh, use that to compose a kind of a variable which will have multiple validations in it right so let me show you that now so we will write validators dot compose okay so we will say validators dot compose right and what we are composing we are composing the validations that needs to be applied right so you will write it in bracket and like in this array right so now you can instead of writing them individually here you can just write them here see so this is like you're composing and saying that this is a type which has to be fulfilled you can give it a name and reuse it that I'll probably show you a little later that's a little advanced but I don't want to confuse you for now for today's episode your logic says learn how to implement the validators for the form control and you will add validators dot required validators dot min length validators dot max length etc also learn how to use multiple validators like this using an array right that's your homework again use it in the form disable the form if it is not valid these are different inbuilt validations that are available to work with the forms right there are more and we will continue learning as we move forward like for example showing error messages here right if you have not entered will show some messages uh, the kind of error it has using has uh, error etc for today learn just learn that uh, it, whether it is valid or not also what you can do when you submit a form check 
whether the form is valid or not obviously it will be valid then only the submit button will be disabled so you can say dot valid right so this will give you true or false right you can get form state by using dot valid dot invalid etc like this so go ahead give it a try learn by doing practical code along with me let me know if you have any doubts i'm always here to help you in the next episode we will learn about the form states like i told you validation can be done in multiple ways and i'm here to help you with each and every uh, concept of angular validations form validations right so to in the next episode we'll learn how to use the form states to display proper messages meaningful messages and build the more interactive ui okay so join me in the next episode if you like this tutorial please do um, like share comment subscribe um, if you like my work uh, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com/arctutorials thank you so much see you in the next episode